got a lot of news you can use today. We're going to go ahead and start off with uh, announcements earlier this week that the dominoes are falling. And when I say the dominoes are falling, I'm talking about what has happened to Zillow's iBuyer program. We talked about that at the end of last year, earlier this year. Uh, the huge losses that they have, uh, and I believe now they've recently gone over a billion dollars in losses in their iBuyer program. But the, the other dominoes that fell this week were Open Door and Redfin. Both of those folks have iBuyer programs. Their sales took dramatic increases and their losses skyrocketed. In fact, Open Door's uh, losses, as they announced the other day, were actually higher than Zillow's. Um, they did the same thing that Zillow did, same thing Redfin has done, and they were overpaying for properties, and now they've got a glut of properties they can't sell, uh, or at least can't sell without taking a severe loss. So they are metering those sales out over a period of time so that they don't take the entire hit right up front all at once because they would have to declare bankruptcy and their investors would have a, a, a fit. Um, so expect that these houses get sold over a period of time. I and mean, there are tens of thousands of houses involved in this debacle. Um, and one of the, the side things that we're seeing as a result is a lot of the more seasoned real estate rehabbers that, uh, that I am in contact with out there are really slowing their role for a couple of reasons. One of them is, is these issues that there's going to be this glut of houses coming on the market. They don't want to get involved in a house today that they may overpay for that may be worth less when they sell it in July, August, September, that type of thing. Uh, and the other is the inflationary pressures that we're running across. There's, and this is the second piece of the news you can use for today. Um, inflation has been a problem, but as I've maintained all along, I think some of it is operational error. Um, it is due to COVID and it's due to mismanagement by the government and by some private companies in terms of how they handle things. Now, the uh, Chi uh, Chinese uh, government probably, and certainly the businesses, uh, the, some of the large businesses in China have figured a way to extend uh, inflation with or without the help of our Fed. Now, if the Fed was to drop interest rates, um, you know, create more inflation in theory, if they're to raise interest rates, it should dampen inflation. But they, they pulled an ace card out. And what they're doing now, I saw this a couple of weeks ago. I showed you guys a, a video of the port of Long Beach, where a year ago, we took a shot and it was between 80 and 90 boats waiting to be offloaded. When I did this thing about three, four weeks ago, there were seven boats out there. And I don't know if I mentioned, but when I went back and looked at the film, three of those boats were totally empty. Um, and what the Chinese have managed to do is they're paying double tariff or they're paying double ocean charges on these boats to bring stuff over from overseas, but not to take anything back. So in other words, you, you, you go from Shanghai to Long Beach offload. And then instead of loading something up, this would be the normal course of business. You'd load up out of California here, primarily farm quantities, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, parts, things, uh, aircraft things that we make here, the, some of the things that we manufacture, and then you'd ship them to some other part of the world, maybe China, maybe, uh, you know, the Far East, uh, potentially the Middle East, that type of thing. Now the Chinese are paying these boats to come over, drop stuff off and go home empty. Um, and what that is doing is it is plugging up our ability to sell some of our exports. In other words, we can't export some of these goods, which in turn makes it very difficult for us as a country to dig ourselves out of the hole that we've gotten ourselves into. So it's, it's pretty smart. It's, uh, I would call it elegantly brilliant move on the part of the Chinese uh, to do this because there's still going to be high demand. It's going to raise the price for their stuff and it's going to make it harder uh, for us here economically, it could definitely bring our economy to our knees because a certain percentage of everything that we do is predicated on a, a trade balance, the you know, same amount being bought and sold from for a particular country, for example. Now, there's always trade imbalances. We bring in more from China than we ship to China. But primarily in most countries around the world, we will ship more stuff to them that we make and get less stuff from them that they make. Uh, this has the ability to flip that, turn that around because logistically 
and the Chinese control the majority of the shipping now. The logistically, they've got their hands around our uh, freight throat, as it were, and we're not able to ship certain things out. So it's going to be an interesting thing. Uh, I'm imminently involved, of course, in California agriculture, and it's definitely hurting us because we can't get things shipped out of out of the country. Uh, primarily. So I'll keep you guys up to date, let you know what's going on on that. And uh, we'll get some updates on uh, how bad the iBuyer thing, uh, tangible numbers, but expect this small cliff. It's not a large cliff, but there is a cliff of overhanging inventory to hit the markets probably during what we'd call the buying season, which would be later this spring, this summer, and this fall. We'll let you know what goes on. All right.